Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with today's coronavirus update. Today is Monday, let's see, May 11th. Brief update tonight. I'm actually working in the emergency department tonight, so I will be back in the morning with my normal sort of post-shift summary. I'll tell you what the lay of the land is in the emergency department, what we're seeing, what we're not seeing. As normal, we're gonna start with the numbers. 4.17 million cases worldwide, 285,000 deaths, 1.4 million recoveries, in the U.S., 1.38 million deaths, 81,000, I'm sorry, 1.38 million cases, 81,000 deaths, 218,000 recoveries. Here in North Carolina, 15,000 cases, 550 deaths. Our running average of new cases in North Carolina actually hit a new high this week of 443 per day, which is the highest it's been. And we're also backing off on restrictions now, so we'll have to watch those numbers very carefully. Interestingly, if you've been looking at the death numbers, there was, a, or I think, four or five days ago, we were seeing 2,700 deaths a day. And over the last couple days in the U.S., those numbers have dropped down to 1,500. And to today, I think it was down to only 800 deaths. Now, I don't know if that's a vagary of the numbers. If you look backwards in time, we've seen up and down spikes of, of clusters of death. But you know, maybe that's a positive sign if, if we're dropping, because it was looking we were on, the, on track for 3,000 plus deaths a day. It doesn't look like it's going that direction, but the month, unfortunately, is young. I want to talk a little bit about antibody testing. We've talked about the testing that was done in California in the Santa Clara Valley, where they showed about 4.4% of the population was positive for uh, antibodies against the virus. New York City, they've had numbers as high as 25%. Wake Forest University published some very preliminary numbers with a lot of caveats the other day about North Carolina. And it looks like our rate right now is 2.2%. So 2.2% of the population sample they did had positive antibodies. So remember to achieve herd immunity, we need 60 to 70% uh, of the people have been exposed. So you can see at least here locally in North Carolina, it seems we're a far distance from that. Now, I also want to um, put out a question to everybody because one of, you know, we've posted some things about uh, some controversies on social media, the pandemic video and other things. And I've gotten, you know, a lot of uh, feedback on that. Most of it is sort of unwelcome and unintelligible, but a lot of people have, have spoken out about it. And one of the things I've been getting repeatedly is people telling me, I don't believe that there's an outbreak because I don't know anybody that has the virus. Now, we talked about this last week, given the number of cases in, in the U.S., you know, the, the chance of, I think when we last looked at it, it was about 0.4% of the population had been, had actually been po diagnosed as being positive for the virus. So it's not unreasonable for you not to know anybody personally that has the virus. But I'll tell you my own personal experience. Up until this week, you know, until this weekend, I knew I've seen plenty of COVID patients in the emergency department, but personally, it was limited to a good friend of my uh, wife's, whose uh, sister-in-law passed away of COVID, and her entire family had it in New York City. But those were the only people that we knew personally. But just in the last 48 hours, uh, I've learned of at least I've 12 people now. So 12 people in the last you know, 48 hours, uh, I've learned of people that I know have either have the virus now or have recovered from it. And so I'm wondering if anybody else has had that experience because you know, obviously as those numbers expand throughout society, more and more of us are going to have some sort of personal connection with somebody who's had the virus. So I'm curious if what your own personal experience is. So this is what I'm asking you to do. If you don't mind in the comments, if you know somebody or you know multiple people, just put down in the comments if you, yes or no, I know somebody. And if you do, how many people that you personally know? I'm not talking about, you know, a friend of a friend, somebody you don't know, that you personally know, because I'd be interested to know, and I think other people would, would get some value of seeing those uh, numbers. So just put them in the comments and then I'll, after, you know, I'm going to probably not do it in the morning, but uh, sometime this week, I'll take a look at those and, and give you a rundown of what it looks like. I also wanted to talk quickly about the difference between case 
fatality rate and infectious fatality rate is because these number get, numbers get banded about like, oh, it's more deadly than the flu, less deadly than the flu. Case fatality rate is where you take the number of people who died over the number of people who have been diagnosed with the disease. So in this case, the number of people have had positive, you know, positive tests. So for the U.S., it would be uh, 81,000 deaths divided by 1.38 million cases. And I can't do that math in my head, but that would be the case fatality rate in the U.S. Now, that number is always going to be much, much higher than the infectious fatality rate because that's the real rate that people die at. And that takes into account the number of deaths divided by the actual number of people who are infected. So if you have a disease like COVID-19 that many people either have minimal symptoms or have no symptoms at all, the number of people who are infected is far, far higher. So when you divide the number of deaths by that much larger number, you're going to get a much smaller number. Now, University of Washington just put out a very um, caveat-laden paper that's showing that the individual, the infectious fatality rate in the U.S. right now is about 1.3 percent versus 0.1 percent for the flu. Now, that those numbers they cl they clearly state in their in their analysis that they don't have complete numbers. We don't know how you know what the rate of of infected but uh, uh, patients that don't have any symptoms is. And so without that, it's very, very difficult to say, but that's an idea. And I think a lot of people think that that number will be ultimately around 1% for a variety of reasons. And so, you, you know, think about the population of the country, 1%, you, know, you can see that there's potentially a lot of people that could die. And that's why we need to take this serious. And unfortunately, as I've learned, there's a lot of people that just flat out either don't believe the virus exists, they don't believe any of the numbers. And I think that we need to sort of you know, educate people. And again, as I keep saying, do not trust me. Do your own research. The data is out there. There are plenty of independent sources. I know you're going to, some of you are going to say, no matter what source I name, it's, it's owned by the government, by Bill Gates, by whomever. But you know, there are good people working in these organizations like Johns Hopkins and University of Washington and Harvard and all these other places that are doing good work that aren't being any, aren't being influenced by some, you know, some other people. So do your own research, look into it. But I'm going to stop there. I will be working the emergency department tonight. So I'll, as I typically do, I will do a post, depending on how tired I am, first thing tomorrow morning, kind of telling you what the lay of the land is in the emergency department. And then I don't think I work for about a week. And then I work a bunch. Um, I think I work two, two weekends in a row. And so there'll be more of those updates going forward. As usual, Wash your hands, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, take care of everybody around you. If you like this, subscribe to our page, hit the little bell, follow us on Facebook and like us on Facebook, and I will see you hopefully tomorrow morning if I don't get uh, killed too badly in the emergency department tonight. Good night.